What's up everybody, Coach Mills here, coming at you with a brand new Overwatch video, and in this video we're going to be breaking down 8 mistakes that prevent you from easy diamond. I'm going to break down 5 general mistakes that every single person can utilize to help them climb, and it could be the big thing holding you back, and then we're going to break down 1 mistake for tank, DPS, and support each, so that you have targeted things to help you improve at your select role. Now go ahead over to the GameLeap.com website right now if you want in-depth VODs, tips, Tips and tricks, mechanical guides, and much, much more. We have tons and tons of content on the Game Leap website, so don't miss out. Go check it out in the links down below. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of players have when they're trying to climb in Overwatch is they try to learn small tips to help them climb out. And what I mean by that is they will learn one little tip here, one little tiny interaction there, and they're not focusing on the big thing that matters, the three pillars of overwatch game sense positioning and mechanical skill now sure maybe understanding some really obscure genji tech might get you like one game in 10 that you get one kill that you wouldn't have gotten right but is that gonna actually carry you from one rank to the next absolutely not now in my personal opinion mechanical skill is the easiest thing to work on because it's pretty clear what you have to do you have to be able to hit more heads have more critical percentages and understand how to use the abilities of your given hero and positioning would be the most difficult thing to work on. Now, typically, as a general rule of thumb, if you lose a matchup just because you didn't hit the shots that should have been easy to get and you should have actually won, that's usually a mechanical problem. If you keep getting caught out and killed first, and if you're the first pick multiple times in a game, that is usually a positioning problem. And typically, game sense comes up when there are things about the game that you simply don't understand. However, the majority of people that watch Game Leap videos, I find, have higher on average game sense but severely lack in the mechanical skill and positioning section so i would definitely try to analyze your own gameplay and find which of these you need to work on bringing these up to a certain level is not only going to help you climb right away but it's going to set you up better for future improvement down the line now the next big mistake that is holding players back basically no matter what rank you are and it's caring overly much about stats or medals for absolutely no reason i can't tell you how many times people have bragged about their heals per 10 like it actually matters if you have more heals per 10 than a Grandmaster player if you're stuck in gold. Obviously, you should see a disconnect here where heals or damage or kills per whatever don't really matter without context. And if players all over from different ranks have different medals or stats than you or worse stats and they're above you, then that should just be a clear sign that it doesn't actually matter. For example, let me tell you a story about a long time ago when I actually climbed my support to Grandmaster, even though it was my least played role. I can't tell you how many times when I was climbing through high diamond and masters before i got to grandmaster that i was playing ana and i had silver healing and a lot of people are like what the heck silver healing on ana when you have like a lucio or something like that on your team and right off the bat someone could say hey what the heck this ana only has silver she's throwing she's obviously throwing and maybe in some scenarios you would be correct however what that stat failed to consider is the fact that i hit over 16 sleep darts in the average game was the fact that i got multiple multi-person nades and i just racked up some kills by pumping damage into random things across the map every once in a while. You see, I played a very aggressive Ana, but at the time, it was extremely effective in the meta. Now, essentially what I'm saying is getting value on the table and contributing to the team fight is all that matters. Having some arbitrary stats about damage and a limbs and heals and whatever, this is really going to hold you back if you overly analyze and really care about these things too much because I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter at the end of the day if you're doing enough to consistently win team fights then you're going to be climbing regardless of what your stats or medals are now the third big mistake that's holding you back from diamond and beyond is getting far too tunnel visioned on what other people on your team should be doing let me ask you a question do you think a smurf tank care about their dps constantly losing the widow duel no they 100 percent don't and they're going to find a way to win the game regardless and you might be asking okay how in the world are they going to keep winning if their widow keeps getting picked 
To better understand the mind of a smurf, you have to identify yourself as the difference maker. And you need to ask yourself, what can you do that will have enough impact to win the game? If you're playing Ryan and your widow keeps losing the fight again and again and again, and she's not swapping off, swapping to Hammond and farming that widow maker, all of a sudden, your widow won't be dead. He'll be alive and contributing to the team fight. And maybe you'll win the game just off of that. Now, this is a tiny example, but the big point that I'm trying to make here is that you should always be looking for things that you can do to win the game regardless of the amount of impact your teammates are bringing remember teammates have bad games you could be going up against smurfs and crazy things can happen in ranked all the time but at the end of the day you are the difference maker and caring about the randomness aspect of the teammates that you get on every single game that's not going to help you climb yes maybe you get bad teammates but you got to remember sometimes you're going to get good teammates sometimes you're going to have the smurf on your team but at the end of the day you are the one person that never ever changes now moving on to tip number four the big mistake that players are making all over the place is hard tunnel visioning and committing to a play even when it doesn't make sense anymore for example they see like a low tank and they keep chasing that tank and that tank is barely alive but keeps getting healed up and barely alive and keeps getting healed up and then they chase them all the way to oblivion and feed because of it or they go into a fight thinking hey i'm gonna use grab hey i'm gonna use grab and three of their teammates die but they're so tunnel visioned at pulling off this play that they don't take a step back and realize hey i should save this ultimate for another fight yes i know sometimes it's hard and you really get kind of caught up into what's happening on the screen and you're super hyper focused but sometimes when you're in a safe position take a step back acknowledge the entire battlefield notice a few things like who on your team is alive what ultimates do they have how much ultimates do the enemies have and things like that and then decide hey should i continue with this game plan should i continue trying to pull off this ultimate combo or this play and in doing so you're going to prevent yourself from hard tunnel vision and feeding and basically just throwing team fights all over the place or wasting valuable resources now the last big mistake that players are making basically pretty much at every single rank but it's really going to hold you back from getting diamond is not putting yourself into the shoes or point of view from your allies. Now, what I mean by that is, let's go back to that Widow example where your Widowmaker is constantly losing the Widow 1v1. Well, if you just keep seeing your Widow dying, you might assume that that to be true. But imagine another scenario where that Widow is getting dove on by the enemy Wrecking Ball, by the enemy Genji, and being sniped at by Widow. If you're just looking at who's dying on your screen, it's easy to just instantly blame that person and write them off, but if you put yourself in their shoes for a second, you can set things up to make it easier for them. You could pocket them. You could peel for them. You could set up a scenario where they have a much easier job. You see, part of climbing in Overwatch is playing the game of ranked, and a big part of that is finding the path of least resistance. And what I mean by that is there will always be a route to victory in every single game, and it's your job to find exactly what that is. Sometimes it is throwing everyone aside and hard caring, swapping to that Roadhog and hooking people out of nowhere, swapping to that Zen and fragging out, or swapping to that Widowmaker and clicking every head. But is that the path of least resistance, or does that require you to go so above and beyond your own innate skill that it's pretty much impossible? possible or it's more akin to a Hail Mary. Now, instead of doing that, imagine playing instead in a playstyle or swapping to a character that can help enable your players to play better together or do their jobs better. Whether it's a Widowmaker losing the duel or a Zen constantly getting dove, you can always adapt your playstyle and try to find that path of least resistance. Now, yes, the hard carry example that we gave previously, that might be the only way to win a game and you have to play for it and sometimes it's going to work, but unfortunately, sometimes it's not and you can't expect to win every game. However, a lot of players will default to a very difficult path, a path that's going to put a lot of pressure on them to succeed, rather than just simply enabling a character. Sometimes it's as easy as putting a little bit of thought into what your allies are going through and giving them the tools to make their job a little bit easier. And then things just connect like clockwork and just through a simple, simple playstyle adjustment, all of a sudden, a team that was just falling apart at the wayside is working extremely well together. You give us a little bit of resources to your Widow, and all of a sudden, she's winning the Widow 1v1 duel, or she's not getting dove and killed instantly. And then, because of that, she's putting more pressure on the front line. And because of that, your tanks are winning the front line. And because of that, your team is rolling through the team. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see the cascade of things that can happen here? And it's all about finding that path of least resistance. And 
and constantly adapting and putting yourself into your ally's shoes to find the way that you can win that game as easy as possible. Now moving on to the individual role tips that I got for you in this video. First off, let's talk about the tanks. And the big mistake that tank players are making all over the place is they're not realizing that it's their job to create space. And what I mean by that is space is the area on the map that allows your DPS and supports to be freed up and position accordingly and aggressively make plays on the enemy from different angles and things like that. Now the best way that you can actually help your team as a tank is playing the appropriate tank and play style that best enables your DPS and supports. For example, if your DPS is something like a Genji and a Tracer, creating space on the front line with something like Winston is extremely, extremely powerful. But if you're playing something like a Reinhardt, these characters can't utilize the space you're creating to the same extent, and it's going to be a lot harder for you to do your job. Essentially, one of the most important things that tank players could actually know is what team compositions work extremely well together and how different characters enable each other. Tank players are typically quantified by a high amount of game sense and understanding about what enables what and who works best together. And that's something that you have to learn if you want to go above and beyond being a tank. Now, moving on to the next role that we got to talk about is DPS. And in the DPS category, of course, mechanics are the king. And how much you perform a lot of times or the plays that you can pull off are directly tied to your mechanical skill. That being said, however, while mechanics are a constant work in process, you can still hard carry a game when you are not mechanically better than your opposition. Essentially, what I'm telling you to do is fight on an axis that you can win on. If you're playing a DPS McCree and you're consistently botting the enemy tracer, just rinse and repeat until you win that game. However, if you're getting farmed over and over again and losing the duel to an enemy widow, an enemy tracer, or whatever the case may be, fight on an axis that you can win on. Play with your team if you need to. Go and swap to a character that can get value even outside of the enemy's DPS or is a direct counter to them. Essentially, it's every single DPS's job to find consistent value and impact regardless of how good the enemy DPS are and what characters they're playing. You can adopt your playstyle to focus far less on your mechanical skills and much more on simply dealing damage on the front line and adapting these and kind of turning the knobs between aggressive impact and defensive value is something that you should really be trying to alter every single time you're on a DPS because it's your responsibility to always be outputting a certain amount of value no matter what is actually happening. Now moving on to the support category, the biggest mistake as far as supports are concerned is an overemphasis in healing in general. For the most part, supports have the most powerful abilities in the entire game and the most powerful powerful ultimates in the entire game. And the reason that this is important is these are not directly tied to healing, they are tied to abilities that give value in other ways. Like for example, Zen Discord, Lucio Speed Boost, on Antinade, and Sleep Dart. The list goes on and on about these abilities that if used correctly in the right scenarios can have completely absurd impact over a team fight, but players are focusing far too much about consistent heals rather than consistent ability use. I'm going to tell you in on a little secret, and this is the reason why support players at the Overwatch League level are so sought for. When you are playing a game and it seems that the entire team is just rolling through the enemy team, most of the time, that's because you have supports that are contributing to the team fight directly and still doing their job healing. I was playing on one of my alt accounts the other day and we held off the enemy over and over again. Team fight after team fight, round after round, even though they were investing ultimates and things like that on Hanamura's second. But in like the last fight of the entire game with 40 seconds on the clock, our team pushed a little bit too aggressively in the top left and the enemy Ana hit a fat four man nade that quickly turned into four kills for free. And then the remaining two of us got ulted by the enemy team and they won that game out of nowhere based on the ability of one support. Now this is an extreme example of what can happen with supports in general, but you need to understand that mastering ability and ultimate use and timing and getting value out of each and every one of these while trying to use them a lot more in your games is going to allow you to have the type of impact that really allows you to carry and people all over the place really think that supports have the least amount of impact in a game, but I'm here in my opinion, I think it's the most and that's someone that's played tank, DPS and support. I really do 
feel like support players might not be the shining star of every single game, but as far as whether or not you're going to win or lose a game, supports have some crazy behind the scenes impact if you can really tap into the power level of these dynamic abilities. But go to the Game Leap website right now if you want in-depth tips and tricks, advanced VODs, and much, much more. We have in-depth guides over every single character in the entire game, so go check it out in the links down below. But thanks so much for coming by. That's all I got for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and of course, until next time.